Interface Video, in cooperation with Fairfield Federal, presents Fairfield Today. Brought to you by Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, Fairfield Medical Center, Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, the Frankie Smith Funeral Home, Fairfield County Adam H., Dagger Law, and the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities. Hello friends and welcome to Fairfield Today. I'm Paul Jasson, your host. Thank you for joining us. We're in the lobby downtown of uh, Fairfield Federal. Beautiful day as we're taping today and uh, I guess cicada time is around us. You know, they've got that going on everywhere. That's, that's kind of what everybody's uh, talking about these days, but it's a, a beautiful springtime. We're heading into the summer. We, we know we've got the festival out there. We know the fair is coming. So lots of things to look forward to in Lancaster, Fairfield County. So we're glad you're with us today. Second half of the show, we'll be talking to uh, Tyler Sisson. Tyler is the grandson of Al Beavers, and we'll be talking Beavers Field out of Route 37, just a tremendous baseball complex out there. One of the, again, iconic places here in Lancaster, Fairfield County. He's done so much for the area since 1990. It's been around 30 plus years, so we'll be talking to him in the second segment. First segment here today is a, some, some uh, organization I'm, I'm close to. A, a, it's, a, it's a great organization. They do a lot. You always hear the phrase, it's all about the children. Well, I don't think any organization exemplifies that more than Big Brothers and Big Sisters. And I have with me the Executive Director of Big Brothers and Big Sisters, Joe Lynn Pugh. Joe, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Very excited to be out and talking about the kids and everything that's going on. Well, it's all about the children. Absolutely. Nobody, we say for the kids all the time. Nobody says that more than you. Now, <laughs> right. now, I've introduced Joe Lynn and I've left our guest, which anybody looking knows without a mask. You probably could tell them with the mask, right, but I certainly without the mask you can spot our guests. But tell us who's with us today. Today we are honored to have Ken Culver with us. Uh, Ken has been a big brother with Big Brothers Big Sisters since 2013. Wow. Um, and in 2019 he was honored with the Big of the Year Award from our agency and he was selected as the State of Ohio's Big of the Year for 2020. So That's we are very honored to have Ken with us today. Thank you, Joel, and appreciate the opportunity to come and talk to you. Thank you. So I can talk about my relationship <laughs> as long as you want me to, right. but, but I, I will begin by uh, talking a little bit about the history. My, my little is Seth. Uh, mm -hmm. Seth and I got matched up in September of, of 2013, and that story is, is worth repeating because uh, just a month or two before we, we got together, Seth lost his favorite uncle. Uh, to, in a car accident, uh, and so he was drifting. Uh, and uh, in that month of September, I had lost my big brother to ALS. Uh, and uh, so right after, uh, right after my, my, my brother's passing, I was drifting. And so I thought, I've been a little brother my whole life. To, my big brother's gone now. What does that mean for me? Uh, is there a message? And so. I decided that yes, I think since I've been a little brother all these years, I'm going to try to be a big brother. So that that caused me to join. Uh, Seth and I were were matched a month or two later, something like that, October, November. Both of us looking for a new opportunity, new relationship, and that's how it began. And so, in fact, we've been uh, big and little friends, buds for eight <laughs> years. And in fact, I like to joke that I was the uh, big brother then. Today, he's the big brother <laughs> he because he's grown like anybody. Well, uh, he'll be 18 coming yeah. come August, uh, and I, uh, I look forward to that relationship going beyond even that time. Mm -hmm. And so, it's been a great journey for both of us, uh, without question. Uh, I can talk on for, for yeah. there. If you have questions, ask well, me. Well, I think that one of the things that um, impressed me the most about Seth, and I know you've talked about this as well, is one of the first times I got to actually interact with Seth out in the, the community. We went to Kings Island, mm -hmm. and um, which Fairfield Federal supports every year is, right. is our big trip to Kings Island. And Seth came up and he shook my hand and looked me in the eye and he's like, thank you so much for pulling this together. I'm glad to be here. Can't wait to spend the day with you and just had this wonderful conversation. And I walked away and I was like, Oh my gosh, that's Ken Culver. Like he is, he, Seth has really um, grown into this remarkable young man. And I really think that it's a testament to the relationship that you two have. Um, and Seth is now a big brother. 
Right. He's a big brother in the school base yeah. program at Bruin Union, which is which really resonates with me. That yeah. that makes me feel really good about his development. There's no question about that. So and you'd be a big grandfather now. I'd be right. a big yeah, grandfather. Oh, That's oh, what really? I, just I wonder going. if there is such a program. <laughs> uh, but Seth has been, um, it's interesting, in his development, uh, I find myself now uh, being looked after by Seth. Yeah. Uh, if, if we're walking in the woods, he makes sure I don't trip over a root. Okay. Uh, he picks me up when I'm sitting down, that helps too. <laughs> uh, he's opening doors for me and things of that nature. <laughs> so Seth is, uh, is growing very right. well. And, and I must say that, um, uh, that he, in the run-up to the Big Brother uh, contest, if you will, for the yeah. state, Jolene, you mentioned that each one of us wrote our essays. Mm -hmm. And one thing that Seth said that resonated with me so much was, uh, I think, words to the effect like Ken is, tr is, is teaching me even when he doesn't know it. Yeah. And I think that's what Big Brothers I is all so about, is, 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 is bottling behavior. And so you better watch what you say and do because somebody's going to be watching you. And it in is. this case, it's... it's uh, well, I, I, th I think that's an important uh, something to learn in life. And obviously, yes. Seth has learned that, that even when it's unintentional, right. mm -hmm good or bad, somebody could be watching and they're picking this up. Absolutely true. And of course that translates not just to my big, but to my grandchildren too and my kids <laughs> before. People watch you. They, they, it's not what you say, it's what you do. Right. And that's so important. Now, and Joe Lynn, as far as uh, how many big brother, how many littles do you have now? Um, and we, we have, we're serving about 200 kids right now as of today. Um, it kind of fluctuates a little bit with the school program, and we always have the need for more. How, how has this past year affected you folks? Everybody's been affected somehow. Everybody has been affected. You know, the need is higher and the funds are less. Yeah. And so we're really trying to be creative with what we can do in the community to, to not only build awareness, but to raise funds to be able to support more matches. Um, and you know, I think that it, what makes Big Brothers Big Sisters different is that we provide support to the big. Um, and the little throughout the relationship. So we're there to help the little's family if they need something to support the big, if there's more training that's needed or a specific issue that comes up. Um, we're there to provide that support. And so it's helpful to have our community support what we do um, so that we can keep making that happen. And exposing them to new opportunities too, you know, Going to the zoo might not be a big deal for some of us with our children, but going to the zoo and seeing the Christmas lights for the first time can be magical. And that was one of Seth's favorite memories. You know, after all these years, you've did hundreds and hundreds of activities. I mean, that was our first to get together, yeah. the uh, wild lights, and he was just, he went bonkers. <laughs> right. He just loved it. He, I think he took his whole camera roll, you know, and took every photo he could of, of all the lights. And so those kind of little tiny moments really. <clears throat> really do have a long lasting impact you know Seth was 14 years old I think when he told me that story and it was a really great story that he he shared and so um, you know just having that community support and even spreading the word that we need bigs we have 80 kids waiting right now and mm. that's you know every day that goes by that one of those are not matched that that is hard for us because we know that's a day we're losing um, to be able to provide that support and that encouragement and and Ken I'm sure you would tell us that with 80 young people out there I'm sure it breaks you all's heart to yeah. see this without able to really do more and I'm sure you would tell anybody that wants to volunteer and become a, a big brother or a big sister or big brother like yourself that uh, I would guess you would say you get more out of this than possibly you <laughs> think your your little has absolutely true uh, I would encourage people people by age I mean grand grandfather's sure, age sure. to get involved uh, if you uh, if you put uh, Google mentoring or mentoring organizations one of the things one of the first things that pops up is big brothers big yeah. sisters it's it, yeah. that's what it's known for uh, I would encourage people any age especially my age because a lot of people my age think well that's you know they're, they're just gonna wind down mm -hmm. now the fact is is that people my age have been around the block a few times we know a few things and just by going out and hanging out you don't have to do anything fancy like run a you know 5k <laughs> you, you can just <laughs> hang out and talk and and model behavior anybody can do that uh, even people who are grandparents parents age so I would 
definitely encourage that. And yes, Paul, uh, I'm, 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 I'm glad and I hope that Seth uh, would continue to say he gets a lot out of, out of it, but it really helps me too. It yeah. makes me, me feel like I still have a role to play mm -hmm. and uh, I want to continue doing that. I would imagine too that it, it's those moments where you're just together that are really the great moments. No, nothing wrong with going to the zoo, nothing wrong with going to a basketball game. These are, these are places where right. especially the little will never forget that. But I think the impactful moments or when it's just you two chatting about life. Absolutely. Uh, car and, rides, right? Right. Car rides. Car <laughs> rides, yeah. I'm, That's right. Yeah, I'm teaching him to drive, helping to teach yeah. him to drive oh right my. now. Uh, yeah, he's behind the wheel. and uh, Stay off the yeah. sidewalks. Uh, yeah, well, he's doing great. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I had him parallel parking last time, and I put the, the, the stanchions really close together, and he could park in tight. They don't even do, yeah. make you get parallel parking when you take your test now. Oh, don't oh, really? tell him that. Is well, that right? Yeah, no, we're, oh, we're no, you just to have a it. maneuverability. Oh. Now, when we all learn to drive, yeah. you had to park yeah. we, over here on Pearl at least where right, I where right. we had to do it but now it's maneuverability but yeah. anybody that can parallel yeah. park you'll yeah. be way ahead of the game yeah, were those really? model eight model A's or model T's <laughs> that's that very were. hurtful Ken. that's very you're not incorrect but it's very hurtful well the other thing I want to say that was what, what Seth what I enjoy about Seth is when he's doing things for other people uh, he loves uh, foundation dinners for example serving oh, at my. foundation dinners uh, he got involved with the downtown cleanup yeah. with us a couple weeks ago and he, he likes getting down and dirty He's, he's full of mulch, full of dirt, and he's just <laughs> happiest doing that yeah. sort yeah, of thing. Absolutely. And and as you indicated, uh, you you help the bigs, you help the littles, and that doesn't absolutely. come inexpensive. Uh, not only do you need volunteers, but you need some financial help. Your website has all this information. Yes, uh, what is your website address? You can just Google Big Bros Big Sisters yeah. at Fairfield County, and, yeah. it, and it takes you right there. It's got there. a great website, yeah. lots of information. So you're looking for people, not only volunteers, but uh, individuals businesses for financial help would be absolutely. great absolutely and there's little things you can do as well you know gift cards yeah you know to a restaurant that then we can give it to the bigs and littles because yeah. you know the bigs cover that cost and so it would be nice to be able to offer those things every once in a while um, so it doesn't take much to to really please us we get excited over <laughs> very little things um, well, versus boy big boys sent sure. us some coupons the other day and we were like all oh, the littles are gonna love so this, what's so. your number if they want to call your office 740-687-9477 easy for you to say fast, I guess. <laughs> That working from home for a couple months really, really messed me up. Well, we've had JoLynn Pugh and Ken Culver. JoLynn is the executive director of uh, Lancaster Fairfield County and the Big Brothers and Big Sisters. Ken Culver has been a big brother since 2013, right? Mm -hmm. 2013, and more recently named the Big Brother of the Year for the entire state of Ohio. So, Ken, congratulations! You. Just a you, you, have you had to build on another room to put all your awards and your plaques? I mean, you, I'm sure the Parks Department gave you one for the Fairfield County Parks passing, but uh, we all know that uh, when, when Ken Culver's involved in something, you get 100%, and that's, that true. that's a bunch. So we appreciate all that you've done, certainly it, overall, but, but for this, that's a, a, a true award. And, and Seth has been very fortunate. He hit the lottery when he well, hit I, you as a. Thank you. I, there's, there's no better, no better activity than to try to. Uh, work with the next generation. Sure, yeah. Keep it well, going. We're good. Get more guys like Ken. You'll be in good shape. Won't I know. You? I yeah. know. I only need what, like eighty. <laughs> <laughs> big brothers and big sisters. Google them. They got a lot of ways you can help on their website. So, Jolyn, thanks for joining Thank us. So Ken, much, congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you for joining us. We'll be back to talk Beavers Field in just a moment. Dagger Law has been part of the Lancaster community for more than one hundred ten years. This is where we live and work. You'll see us at festivals, sporting events, and all around town. We consider our clients as friends, and we walk alongside you through challenging times. Whether you're a growing business, a changing family, facing litigation, planning your future, or dealing with land issues, we're right here. We are local. We are trusted. We are experienced. Dagger Law. Fairfield Medical goes the extra mile to give attention to their patients, to their guests, anybody that comes within those doors. There's no question that the staff there were all personally invested in seeing that I got the best care possible. The staff was so comforting, I felt like she was in the best hands. They basically gave me a second chance at life and I'm, I'm going to make the most of it.
Fairfield Federal, when it comes to our customers and our community, we go above and beyond to help. Our people make the difference. We were uh, retiring from Tucson, Arizona, and we made a retirement trip out around Ohio, having decided where we wanted to be. And we came across this town called Lancaster, and we fell in love with the downtown area, where the fountain is, and the memorials, and the flags, and, and all the stuff. And I looked around and I said, there's our bank, right there. There's something to be said about a, a community bank in your hometown. Right. If you live in the community, you should do business in the community as much as possible. So it makes sense to bank with the community bank that you, where you live. Fairfield Federal is the bank to be at. If, you're a bit, if you live in this town, or any town actually, you want to bank at a local home bank. And the employees are happy here, they're conversant, customer service is through the roof. There's nothing more you could ask for. Personal or business banking, whatever you need, we take it seriously because we know you do. Stop by today at any of our three locations and see why the difference is clear. Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan specializes in banking that revolves around you. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Welcome back to Fairfield Today. I'm Paul Jass. Thank Joe Lynn Pugh for being with us. Always, always enjoy talking big brothers and big sisters. Little change it up now. Uh, this time of year, uh, springtime, we're moving into that, getting close to summer. A lot of thoughts are on sports, on baseball, and, and one of the iconic places here in Lancaster and Fairfield County when we speak sports is Beavers Field. And it, it all started with a phone call to the Fairfield County Commissioners back in 1987 with a thought from Al Beavers that out on Route 37 they could build a baseball field. And I remember when this was starting and I looked at that and I thought there is no way they could put a baseball field and I guess it's about 13 acres plus maybe, but it looked like no way you could ever build a baseball field out there. I don't know if it was hilly, I can't remember, but it just didn't look big enough. Well, fast forward today and it, it is up and rolling and very strong, 125, 150 games a year. It's, a, it's done, a, done a great job in bringing young people uh, to Lancaster and Fairfield County. And it's a pleasure to have with us a little change up here. Normally we have Al Beavers. Today we have Al Beavers' grandson, Tyler Sisson. Yep, Tyler Sisson. And that's Al Beavers' grandson. And uh, thanks for coming in, first of all. Nope. We appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, you've grown up. Probably baseball's been your life since you can think back to anything. Yeah, I think that's about the only thing I hold in my hand is baseball. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely been the only thing around. Well, uh, growing up with Al as your grandfather, I'm sure you lived and ate and breathed. What year were you born? I was born in 94. 94. So Beavers Field has always been here it has, for you, yeah. for your entire life. Yep. And now you're vice president of? Fairfield County Baseball Complex, which is technically Beavers Field. Yeah. And, uh, Wow, that's an amazing place. Like I say, I can remember Tyler going back to when, when Al started and Max Griggs and some of the other people that were instrumental in getting this going back in the day. And I remember, I don't know how the landscape, I think it had a lot more hills right there where the baseball field is, but, and I'm sure you've seen the pictures of it. They've got a lot of it on your website, great yep. website. Thank you. But uh, my golly, your, your grandpa had this vision of this baseball field and you know Al, when he gets something in him, he's going to get it done, and he did. He did. I mean, it's if you build it, they will come. I mean, yeah. it was a giant hill up there. From I mean, now it doesn't look like it. Now it's just all surrounded yeah. by hill. I kind of forget yeah, that, he, but hills are all around it, but it was the hill. Yep, and, and he I, just and cut it all down and built the stadium. I, I guess that's what I was thinking. I've looked at it. How could you build a field here? This is all full of hills. What never dawned on me, you cut all that away, and then you leave that beautiful view around there. Yeah. That's, that's an amazing place. So now you're... Your home, Beavers Field, is home to, uh, well, not home, but but games that are played there are Lancaster High School, Correct. Fisher Catholic. Fisher usually plays maybe one or two games, but mainly Burn Union plays all their home games while they're building their school for the next two years for now. But yeah, we expect a little longer knowing how projects go. <laughs> sure, well, you you can count on that. Ohio University plays some of their games there. Ohio University and Lancaster, they do, but they haven't had a team in the past couple of years. No, due to the it's, COVID. it's been a tough yeah, time there. Uh, the American Legion team, of course, I'm sure that's what your grandpa was really thinking about was the Legion team because that's yep. been a been a part of his life and playing and coaching and uh, you're involved in them now too. Correct. You're an assistant coach with them. Correct. Yep. Yeah, sure. So, so you play or at least you schedule somewhere in the neighborhood of 125 to 150 games a year out yep. there. 
Yes. Always have rain outs. Always got rain outs, unfortunately. And can't can't quite get the dome. <laughs> so so as we think back, let, let's let's go back in time, maybe a last year. And I think I had your grandpa on a year ago. We we're talking about it. How did last year go for the field? Honestly, it wasn't too bad. I mean, obviously we lost the whole spring. Nobody played school ball. So, yeah. I mean, we lost pretty much our, our big profit, honestly. The, the rental is sure. where we make our money. Sure. At least break even each yeah. year. So we lost the whole spring, so we just had the summer. And unfortunately, it was our 30th year as well. So it's tough we couldn't really celebrate and get yeah. the whole town out there as much as we could because of uh, social distance and everything, and not a lot of people wanted to go anywhere. Gotcha. So that was unfortunate. But, I mean, last year wasn't too bad. I mean, we, we still had the Legion season. We had to play under a, technically a travel umbrella because the Legion canceled yeah. their league. So we had to take our patches off and play under the umbrella travel ball. But we still got... I want to say about 55 games in for our senior team. So, I mean, we still played a pretty pretty good schedule. So, so this year, things are back full go? Correct. Yep. Yeah. They still have – Lancaster High School is limiting the amount of fans they can have. But other than that, Burn Union's not limiting, and uh, neither is our Legion. We're not going to limit at all. So we have quite a bit of space up there to social distance. We'd have to have a lot of people to have yeah. an issue. And, and, and to be honest, you know, and that's always been the big thing. Well, outdoors, what do you need a mask? What do you need that? I mean – uh, none of the teams required mass while they play, right? Not while they play, while they're in the dugout. In the dugout, to. yeah, and that's kind of what you see on college ball and, and pro ball too. Is when they're in the dugout, they're supposed to be covering that. And I'm sure there's there's a lot of a lot going on there too. Uh, with the the improvements we've seen, even after it was opened, it was just a baseball field, bare bones baseball field, many years. But with the amenities that you guys up there, you have a tremendous amount of bleachers there. You have a, a picnic covered. Is it a covered picnic? Covered, two covered picnic areas. Yeah. And we have the two decks that oversee kind of both dugouts. And then, I mean, the hill is honestly, in my opinion, the best place to watch a baseball game. I mean, yeah. you get the overlook of the whole field. You can't miss anything. You don't not obstructed by nets or anything. I mean, it's honestly probably the best yeah. place to watch the game. Speaking with Tyler Sisson, Tyler is the uh, grandson of Al Beavers and he's in, of course involved with Beavers Field out there and your grandma Phyllis, she's, uh, he's dragged her into this. The whole <laughs> the whole Beavers family is involved in this. She runs the uh, concession stand. Is it Phyllis Burger? Phyllis Burger and it's Phyllis's home plate is what we named the concession <laughs> stand. Yeah, we, we had to put her name on something. Well I, and well, she, she deserves it. She I, does. I mean, you know, uh, she's put up with a lot for, for 30 years, more than just a baseball field. She's had Al to deal with for yeah. all this time. So now you've actually, uh, you're overseeing a project now that is near completion. Tell us about Beaver's Dam. Yeah, the Beaver's Dam is a full indoor facility. So, I mean, our main purpose is to broaden out from just baseball. I mean, we want to be able to help as many kids as we can in any sport. So, I mean, it's 120 by 60 foot turf area that can fully open up for football, soccer. Wow. It's actually the size of volleyball, so we could actually bring in a temporary floor and do volleyball in there. Now, where is in the field is that located? If we were standing at home plate? Um, it would actually be right behind home yep. plate. So yeah. it's where our old restrooms were. I mean, the same restrooms, but we just added onto there, put a weight room, and then built the larger building on the back of that. So this will be as a rental facility to individual training? Correct. Individual training, rental, team practices, camps, clinics. Um, I plan on doing some like movie nights for the youth, so kind of like get a big projector then come in there and bring their blankets sure, sure. It's pretty much like a drive air co air controlled obviously air conditioned and no air conditioning <laughs> oh we have the heat i got you we have three garage doors on it to open up for so you, you use more of this probably in the uh in the winter correct when when there's no ball there'll be things involved inside then yep so just like you know. any field sport they can obviously go outside all summer when it's warm and good out but is there anything like that around here? Not around here at all. Yeah. Not of the size. There's a lot of batting cages, obviously. Anybody yeah. can put a batting cage up in a Sure, but that's outside, and that's that's limited by obviously by weather and, and right. lots of other conditions. But this will be inside controlled climate. And yep, there's the Bow Dome up in Hilliard, which is probably three times as big as what we have. But nobody has enough space for like defensive work for baseball yeah. or anything like that. So, and that's kind of been your project. You've overseen that. Yeah, my grandpa did the field, and I was like, well, this is what I've wanted to do since I was in ninth grade I actually did the business plan for this in high school really? yeah so I've been a project I've been working on for a long time wow so, so yeah. uh, it's just an amazing facility out there and, and again all the teams and everything you've got going and and you're the you're the home for a lot of tournaments I've been to some tournament games out there the high school tournament games yep. and stuff you still got those going on we do the, the high school regionals actually this week and then we have 
the American Legion State Tournament we've had for, I believe this is the 10th You're the year. home for that now. Yeah. I remember you used to go down to Athens for right. that year. Well, back when I was, that's been a while, back when I was around high school age, and but, but everything was down in Athens at OU because they had all those diamonds, they had all that, but now you guys are the head. Correct, yep. So now we they do it all on one field now, so they brought it here. The first two years we did it with Fisher and Lancaster, but yeah. we kind of toned it down. They did it all in one field, spread it out. And yeah, we house them in the hotels here and instead of the dorms. I think people got kind of sick of not having air conditioning at the dorms. Because <laughs> it definitely, August yeah. at OU, is it's hot. Yeah, it's, I it's, spent it's quite a few warm. summers there and it's hot. You see a lot of people leaning out of the windows in the dorms. <laughs> I can remember on the ball fields down there, they're, they're yelling and banners hanging outside of the dorms and stuff. Pretty exciting time. It is. Yeah, yeah pretty exciting. Now, will it make any difference to you in terms of uh, it, it, well, not now, but in a few years, Lancaster High School will be moving, and they'll they'll be closing down. They'll eventually, I think, build all their sports complexes mm -hmm. down where Thomas Ewing used to be. Um, will that make any difference in terms of uh, the need for your facility? So, actually, Lancaster has said currently that they still plan on using our field and just using their new ones for the freshmen, and okay. they're only going to do one baseball field, and they've got three teams. So they still plan on using our field. So they're, down there, they'll build a... a uh, a baseball field and a softball field. I believe two softball fields. Don't hold me to that, but I think that's what their plan is. Now, is there any softball that goes on at your place? No. You just way too involved with baseball. Just to... baseball. The mound obviously is the big. Oh yeah, that'd be we the don't difference. Affordable mound, and yeah. I don't think we'll ever have a portable mound there. Yeah, quite dangerous. There's a few places that do, and they have quite a thick lip. That's kind of just, rough. Yeah, it's just not yeah. something I I would personally feel comfortable with. I know my grandpa would. He's all baseball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he'd be a hard <laughs> a hard bulb kind of guy. Yeah. Uh, so, so your your facility, the indoor facility, that's set to open up very soon, I guess. Soon, yes. Hopefully in the next couple weeks. So after baseball season and the and the fall hits, you'll be full go. Full go. Yeah. Got any commitments yet to anybody coming down or anybody involved? Um, a ton of teams interested in renting it out. A ton. I mean, I've every day I have somebody new. Got quite a few other instructors that are going to work in there. Could um, be a seven day a week deal, huh? Oh, it's definitely going to be. It's going to be busy. It's yeah because there isn't anything else around. Most people got to drive to Columbus, Northern Columbus, or anything like that. And there's a lot of athletes just in Lancaster and Fairfield County that- well, It's, it's a, just an amazing complex out there. And I, and your dad and your grandpa probably would have the numbers, but I can't even imagine uh, from a, a, a tourist aspect, how much money that field has generated for Lancaster and Fairfield County. You, you, you have people coming in, visiting, uh, staying overnight for weekend tournaments or weekday tournaments. Mm -hmm. Certainly the food industry is going to, it's just been amazing. This has been a tremendous asset to Fairfield County. Yeah, I mean, it's to be honest, it's tough to walk into, let's say, Roosters or B-Dubs, kind of the place most athletes go to sure. after a game sure. in June and July and not see a uniform that came from Beavers Field yeah. or to see the whole team in yeah. there. Yeah, I mean it's just it's amazing the amount of visitors that come, yeah. and just for instance when we go when I travel with my grandpa it's impossible to walk five feet without <laughs> somebody knowing him from the field. I mean he just everybody knows him, everybody knows Beavers sure. Field, especially in the baseball community. It's just it's massive. Well, uh, the Beavers family and and you as a grandson have been involved in this. You've done a tremendous job out there. So. Uh, you're into uh, 125, 150 games now. You're well into it. I guess we hope for good weather. We hope, yeah. Sometimes we like that drought. Luck luckily, we have the irrigation, so it keeps grass green. But that's, that's what it's all about. Yeah. It's, a, it's a beautiful complex out there, and I would encourage anybody that hasn't gone out to Beavers Field on Route 37 out there. It's, a, it's an amazing place to go. Great place to watch a game. Great food, great amenities, things to go out there. Just, it's just a wonderful day. Uh, you go on the website. Is, is it, uh, I don't know, Beavers Field? Beaversfield.com. Dot com. It's a tremendous website. Got a lot of information, the history, uh, what's been happening, what will happen. Uh, Beavers Dam is all on there, so uh, best of luck on all this. Tyler Sisson has been with us, Al Beavers' grandson. Uh, best of luck for the series. It's going to be a, a fun summer, so good luck with that. And Beavers Dam in the fall. Yep, thank you very much. You, you got your summer me. planned out, don't you? Oh, yeah, it's, it's nonstop. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler Sisson has been our guest, and uh, it's a pleasure to have him here talk about Beavers Field. Thank you for joining us on Fairfield today. Interface Video, in cooperation with Fairfield Federal, presents Fairfield Today. Brought to you by Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, Fairfield Medical Center, Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, 
The Frankie Smith Funeral Home, Fairfield County Adam H., Dagger Law, and the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities.